coming to the world uh, and even his assignment that was given to him was for the purpose of setting us free from sin. And we know that according um, to the word of God in, in Old Testament times that everything was done according to the law. And the law in itself could do nothing for us but simply point out the sin that we had committed. The Bible teaches that if we were guilty of just one of them, might as well say you've done them all. But then in the New Testament, Christ comes for the purpose of liberating. He comes for the purpose of setting us free. Those of us that have been held captive uh, by sin itself. And if we know anything about sin, we know that sin is powerful. It takes you further than you're really willing to go. Someone said it even keeps you longer, amen, than you really want to stay there. So sin within itself, it has, it has power, to, it has power uh, over the sinner. The Bible says that we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. But then when Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus, because Nicodemus wanted to know how uh, can I be born again? And this is the importance because we are born uh, from a fleshly uh, uh, nature. But then if we're born again, it is a spiritual birth, amen, that we enjoy. So the Bible teaches us that whatever that is born of God can not sin. Those are strong words. Whatever is born of God cannot sin. James comes along later and says, he that is without sin, that one that says that they are sinless, is a lie. And the truth of God is not in them. So it, it, it seems like uh, it, is something, it is something about uh, sin that fascinates us. Something about sin uh, uh, that catches our attention. Uh, and after it captures our attention, it has a way of holding us hostage. Any witnesses in the house? And, and so when, when, when we, we look at this, and, and we thank God for the purpose of being born again, because when we are born again, we are literally set free from the bondage of sin. With sin no longer has uh, authority, it no longer has control, it no longer dictates to us, it no longer uh, 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 points us in a, a downward direction. But when we are born again, immediately we are released from the dominion and the power and the control of what sin tells us to do. Amen, somebody. And, and, and so we, we, we come today uh, and, and we look at uh, the scripture in Proverbs 28 uh, and verse number 13. And, and I want to talk like this today because many uh, that, that feel uh, the church have a way of covering, in, covering up things that God tells us to repent of. Amen. The message that John the Baptist came with, he says, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 2012 happens to be that governmental reign and rule and authority, amen, over uh, uh, those of us that are within the kingdom of God. But be if before we can actually get there and get in, we must come to a place of repentance. So repentance literally means a change of mind. It means to turn around and go in the other direction. Amen. And so those things that we are not willing to turn our back on, now we get to the place of covering up. Tell somebody it's a cover up. It's a cover up. Most of what we see in the church is a cover up. Y'all better help me here today. A lot of what we see going on from the pulpit to the door is a straight cover up. So Proverbs teaches us something. 28 and 13. Look at the word. It says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. That's plain as day. It's easy to understand. But look at this. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall what? 
mercy. Shall have mercy. Now what the enemy does, and he is so crafty in doing, uh, it, is that one thing about sin is that you may not um, uh, receive uh, what's, what's due uh, as a result of your sin right then. And so if punishment or justice is not given to you then, you feel as if you've gotten away with something that God condemned. Any witnesses here? Amen. And, and so the enemy has a way of playing with one with one's mind and controlling your mind to a point that you believe that since you did not get caught, then it must be okay. Or since your sin has not been revealed, but somebody say not yet. Not yet. Because hear me, whatever is done in darkness. I wish somebody knew the Bible. It will certainly come to light. Yes, it will. Amen, somebody. And, and, and so we understand that if we cover our sin, we shall not prosper. But why is it there? Why is it that in the church of God that there's a lot of covering up? Yes, it is. And then there's an expectation of still receiving the blessings of God. If you cover up your sins, you are speeding up the death process. And see, death does not always come naturally first. Usually it comes spiritually. It's, it's, it's a sifting because the enemy desires to sift us. And it's not all at once, all the time, but many times it's just a little bit at a time. He takes a little bit of your praise. And he takes a little bit of your joy. He begins to take a little bit of your peace. And oftentimes it's not what the devil is doing. But it is the result of a sinful lifestyle. Oh, I wish I had a full house in here. I would get more amens than that. Amen. And so what the enemy does with the delay, but not just the delay, but the long suffering of God, the enemy will turn around and speak to your mind instead of you following your spirit because your spirit man will tell you exactly what to do. So the Bible says to walk after the spirit. So you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But then oftentimes we allow for the enemy to come in in the mind because that's the battleground. That's the place where the war really goes on. So Christ said, I, I've hung on the cross, I, you know, all, all of the, uh, 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 everything that I took uh, for the purpose of setting you free, you no longer have to cover up. That's right. Because he who the Son has set free, God, I wish y'all would help me here today, is, is free indeed. Because there are times when we will sin. Amen. 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 And, and the continuation of sin, it brings forth death. Yes. Spiritually and secondly, naturally. Yes. Amen. This is why the Bible teaches us that we have to be strengthened with might in our inner man. In our inner man. In our, every now and again, we have to plug in. To the Holy Ghost. We, we have to stay connected. We have to make sure that, that, that we receive the power and the spiritual nourishment that we need. Because we know that there is a devil. But then there are also those things that God has delivered us from that are looked at as being temptation. Amen. But with every temptation, the Lord makes a way of escape. So whenever we, uh, whenever we continue in sin, it brings it forth death. It's, 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 it's a progressive thing that the enemy will use to make you think that God does not know what you have done or that your sin will go unpunished. But whatsoever a man soweth, God, I wish y'all knew something with him. Whatsoever a man soweth, I can't hear you. That shall he also reap. Always that thing that God has delivered us from, the enemy always comes in a way to make you think that it will be different the next time. <laughs> but it always ends up in the same result. It's always the same thing. No matter how dressed up sin may look, or how pleasurable it may see it, may feel, the end result of it is always the same thing. You're going to die. So he's begun the good work in you, but what sin comes in, the only thing that it does, it delays the promise of God for your life. And 
whenever it seems like God is taking his sweet time to give you what you've been praying for or what God has promised you, you always have to look in the mirror at yourself. Amen. You always have to look at your own life and see if there's anything that is in you that is not like God that's delaying the process from God coming through on his promise. But then it says this, but whosoever confess it and forsake it. The two things that you must do in order for you to prosper. Uh -huh. Confess yes. and forsake. Yes. Confess. Mm -hmm. Forsake. The Bible says just confess your faults yes. That's right. to one another. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Yes. Confess, confess your sins. Confess your sins. And the real, real prophecy is when the prophet or the prophetess of God will not just prophesy to you about cars and houses and clothes and money Say and checks in the mail. But that real one is when they give you a word of warning. Yeah. Because when before disaster comes, there's always warning. That's right. Amen. Amen. And, and so that real prophet or the real prophet, they always come with a word of, of warning, not just housing and cars, you're going to get there. Right. But if you do not get your life straight with God, you right. confess it, forsake it. That means just abandon it. Now, often the way you handle your sin is, is as important as sin itself. How do you handle your sin? What, whatever it is, he that covered his sin shall not. But whosoever confess and forsake it, them shall have mercy. Because I recognize that my lack of prosperity had everything to do with myself. Everything to do with my lustful desires. Everything to do with, because there are times when we try and promote ourselves, and God says, you go ahead and do that. Just because people pat you on the back don't mean you get nowhere. We shall have some help in here. Now, it doesn't mean nothing, because people will pat you on the back, and they'll trip you at the same time. They like you one day, and they don't like you on the next day. But it's something about God's sustaining power that when God sets you free from something that was meant to kill you two ways, spiritually and naturally, there's no devil, there's no demon in hell that can keep back what God said I'm releasing to you. So yes, we are going to experience an avalanche of blessing. Yes, we are going to, the devil is going to be released that we might receive everything that God has for us. But then God tells me that if we walk upright, just about this, walk upright, walk upright, walk upright, that no good thing that the Lord will withhold from me. So I'm ready now to receive the avalanche of God's blessing. I'm ready now because those things that I used to cover up, I have to confess and forsake my sin. And then I can receive it. Look at somebody say, you can't receive the blessing. You can't receive the promise. You can't receive the manifestation. You can't receive all that God says that is for you. Tell somebody, get ready to receive.